I just want to make a note of apology for the idiotic behavior of my president. Um, uh, it's a disgrace. And I apologize to um, Justin Trudeau, too, and the other people at the, uh, the G7. It's disgusting. Great to be here. the groundbreaking that De Niro was at, but it might as well be scorched earth. De Niro unleashing a tirade of his own after Donald Trump lashed out on Twitter this weekend, zeroing in on Canadian industry, trade, and Prime Minister Justin Trudeau. Now, De Niro's applause he got today wasn't the only applause he's got in the last 24 hours. He also made international headlines last night at the Tony Awards with this speech. I'm going to say one thing. F Trump. It's no longer down with Trump, it's Trump. De Niro's remarks come following a tumultuous weekend for U.S.-Canadian relations. Trump and Trudeau joined other G7 leaders in Quebec over the weekend. In a press conference, Trudeau called tariffs unjust and promised retaliatory measures. The U.S. has moved forward with tariffs on steel and aluminum on the basis of national security, something Trudeau called kind of insulting. Those statements appear to have irked the U.S. president, who fired back, calling the Canadian PM meek, mild, dishonest, and very weak. Many, including the European Union leaders and Premier-designate Doug Ford, have thrown their support behind Trudeau. Following his anti-Trump stance and his apology today in Toronto, some viewers told me De Niro deserves a key to Canada. It's something I asked the Oscar winner about today. Following the Tony Awards last night, yeah. some people say you deserve a key to the city, the province, and the country. That, uh, that'd be nice. You know, I'll, I'll take it. <laughs> Let's, the sooner he's out of office, the better for all of us. He's an idiot. He's, he's just done something unspeakable. We've all got friends you know. and relatives in the know, U.S. and vice versa. Terrible. Does this make any sense? No you. sense. No. Uh, with regard to the comments in the news today, um, I have only two words to say. Thank you. Um, <laughs> Your thoughts? Well, I have a list of people who are being given the key to the city, and he certainly deserves uh, earnest consideration. He did it uh, last night in New York, and he's doing it again today in Toronto. And I think uh, from chatting with him, these are very strongly held views he had. And I think a lot of Canadians right now would be, uh, you know, more than a bit upset at uh, the kind of attitude that is being, uh, you know, that is being portrayed towards uh, Canadians and towards Canada. And you know, when it comes to Toronto, what's good for Toronto is good for Canada. And when somebody's, uh, you know, taking Canada on, then they're taking Toronto on too. I highlighted directly to the President uh, that um, Canadians um, did not take it lightly, uh, that the United States has moved forward with significant tariffs on our steel and aluminum industry. It's Prime Minister Justin Trudeau at this weekend's G7 summit talking trade, and it appears those comments, among others, triggered a Twitter tirade from U.S. President Donald Trump. Now, some say it hasn't been since John Diefenbaker and JFK. We've had this kind of political tension between Canada and the U.S. Now, today I sat down with a former Canadian ambassador to the United States. He worked with many individuals, including Pierre Elliott Trudeau. He painted a picture of the trade tiff we're currently embroiled in. We thought we had a special relationship. And we now know that we haven't got a special relationship. The advice I would give now to anybody who is in a position of decision making is to keep cool and don't act, uh, react in anger, uh, although it's understandable. How important is it today that we diversify when it comes to trade? Well, it's taken us about 50 years to realize how important that diversification is. And every political leader in Canada since that time has talked about the need for diversification. And we are a little more diversified today because we have trade with China, which is quite substantial, and Mexico, which is quite substantial. 
and there are other uh, powers that we trade with which we didn't then. But on the whole, we have not diversified, and we need to. So how could a trade war impact you? Alan Gottlieb adds that 80 percent of all of Canada's exports go to the U.S. And they're our top import partner, too. So with Canada planning to impose tariffs of its own, the consequences will be felt in your wallet. Douglas Gould with the Toronto Region Board of Trade says price increases go beyond the price of your wheels to the cost of dairy and fresh produce at the grocery store. But the problems for Toronto could stretch far beyond agony at the cash register if we don't shake hands on a new NAFTA deal. Think at a time when the city of Toronto and Toronto Region is doing so well and is attracting uh, Google through Sidewalk Labs, is attracting uh, Amazon, we're on the list of the, 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 for the H2Q, their second headquarters. Uh, word has it we may do very well out of that. We're really worried about the uncertainty that these trade disputes are leading to and investors above all like certainty. But I think whatever happens if this trade dispute drags on inevitably there's going to be negative consequences. I think there's bound to be a lag factor so it'll take a while for things to flow through but I think the, the, the results could absolutely be um, negative. And if the trade relationship remains sour, Gould adds that we could see less tourists coming from south of the border and that could impact Toronto's tourism industry.